The Rivian R1T is a vehicle like no other on the market. It's the first truck that has an electric motor for each wheel. Four wheels, four motors, each independently controlled. There really aren't any other production cars out there that have done this, aside from a few uber niche, low volume builds that only the people who watch channels like this one would know about. And it's difficult to overstate just how cool and how capable this all-wheel drive system is, as it's as good as it gets. So hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are deep diving into what is the holy grail of all-wheel drive systems. And you're thinking, so what? A motor at each wheel. Who cares? Brace yourselves nerds, I promise this video will convince you otherwise, focusing on two conditions, off-road as well as on-road. Let's start off with an off-road scenario, say rock crawling or any highly uneven surface. What's the worst all-wheel drive setup you could have in this scenario? Well, it'd be a system that uses open differentials all around, because open differentials, by design, split torque evenly. Say you have an engine powering an open center, open front, and open rear differential. Each wheel receives 25% of the engine's torque. That doesn't sound so bad, right? But here's what happens. Say you lift one wheel in the air, or just one wheel has poor traction. This means it takes very little torque to spin it. It can't put any power down. And remember, all of our wheels get equal torque, and that torque is limited by the wheel with the least amount of grip. So our engine may have 500 pound-feet of torque, but with a wheel in the air, we're not able to put down virtually any torque. This all-wheel drive system, without some form of assistance like mechanical brakes, is useless. So what would be better? Well, how about something like the G-Wagon's approach? Here you have a vehicle with locking front, center, and rear differentials. This forces all of your wheels to rotate at the same speed, which allows for torque to go wherever it's needed. 100% of the torque could go to one wheel if necessary. In the scenario where one wheel lifts up off the ground, no worries, it doesn't get any torque, but the other three wheels get all the torque the engine can supply and the vehicle drives along no problem. So that's as good as it gets, right? For off-road driving, sure, until EVs came along, especially ones like the Rivian R1T. Generally speaking, with combustion engine based designs, you're choosing to make a sacrifice in either wheel speed or torque splits. With the R1T, because each wheel has a dedicated, independent electric motor, any wheel can rotate at any speed, and with whatever torque the electric motor can supply. You don't have to use tricks like the G-Wagon does, which again forces all wheels to rotate at the same speed. In that case, there's likely only one wheel rotating at the ideal speed, and the other three are compromised, forced to slip in a way that they don't want to. That's why you should never use these locked systems on road because the binding would either ruin tires or destroy the drivetrain. So again, with the R1T, you can individually set the perfect speed for each wheel. Remember, going around a corner, all four tires will be driving at a different radius and thus need different speeds. And you can individually set the torque to any wheel, maximizing it for the condition. But here's the part that genuinely blew my mind you can calculate the friction of the surface you're driving on, and thus determine what surface type you're driving on, and thus optimize the all-wheel drive system for that exact surface. If you're not a nerd, know that you're still welcome here, and I'm happy to translate this for you. You see, when a tire sits on the ground, there's a certain amount of friction between that tire and the ground. That friction, in combination with the vehicle's weight resting on that tire, tells us how much force we can push with the tire to move the vehicle. Here's where Rivian does some very clever back calculations. First off, electric motors have very fine torque control. The computer knows exactly how much torque is being sent from the electric motors to the wheel, and this torque, divided by the tire's radius, gives you your tire's force. So we know F. Okay, step one complete. We can also calculate N, our normal force, by determining how much weight is sitting on the wheel. There are various ways of calculating the individual wheel weight, but for example, you can look at suspension pressure and position sensors at each corner and thus determine how much weight is sitting on that corner's wheel. Step two complete. Okay, so we have F 
and we have n, so now we can calculate mu, our frictional coefficient. When we know how much friction we have, we can figure out the exact amount of torque and at what wheel speed that each motor should apply. Now, you might reasonably say, but Jason, none of that matters. You have wheel speed sensors, just like any car has, and if the wheel starts spinning, you back off of torque, and if you're not spinning, you can apply more torque. You don't need to know mu to do this. And yeah, sure, that works to a degree, but there's a better way. Here's the deal. There's a certain amount of slip that is ideal between a tire and a surface. Slip meaning the relative speed difference between the tire and that surface. Ideally, you want a small amount of slip for perfect acceleration. Remember, if your wheels are spinning, you're not putting much power down. But the amount of slip that you want changes based on the surface that you're driving on. Here's an example to illustrate a point. Let's say you slam the brakes on a paved road. Modern anti-lock braking systems will ensure that the tires continue to rotate and don't simply lock up and slide because this shortens the vehicle's stopping distance in addition to allowing you to steer. But on a gravel or dirt road, locking up the front wheels a bit can actually shorten the stopping distance as it builds up a mound of dirt and rocks in front of the tire, slowing it down faster than if you were to prevent the tire from locking up. Traction control works the same way, just in the opposite direction, accelerating rather than braking. And in some circumstances, like sand or mud, it might be useful to have those wheels spinning. So, for any type of surface, whether that be snow, ice, dirt, sand, mud, pavement, whatever, there's an ideal amount of slip for that specific condition with that specific tire. Here's where the brilliance of Rivian's system comes to light. If Rivian can calculate the friction at the tire, it can likely determine what surface you're driving on. For example, super low friction and you're on something like ice. A bit more grip, sand, mud, dirt. Even more grip, pavement. We know approximations of what mu is for various surfaces, so again, using the calculated friction, Rivian determines what surface you're driving on. And once you know what surface you're driving on, you can choose the exact amount of wheel slip needed for that condition. For each individual tire. This is a long-winded technical explanation simply to say an all-wheel drive system of this style will put down as close to the maximum amount of wheel torque as is possible in any condition on any surface. That is truly cool. And you might say, nah, I'd prefer a differential locker, or maybe a torsion differential, or maybe an electronic limited slip differential. And if you really thought that was better, this EV can mimic those inferior technologies completely. It can perfectly mimic them because torque and wheel speed are independently controlled at each wheel. There isn't a better differential because this can mimic anything out there and in reality it can do even better. There is one theoretical disadvantage but it is easily overcome. A system like Mercedes G-Wagon's three locking differentials means all of the engine's torque can be sent to any one individual wheel. In this case, Rivian R1T has over 800 horsepower and over 900 pound-feet of torque, but that's split between four motors. At any corner, the maximum output is a little over 200 horsepower, but that's still plenty, so realistically, as long as you have powerful motors at each corner, like the Rivian does, being able to send all the available power to a single tire is not a meaningful advantage. Worth mentioning, if you can spin a tire, you have more torque than you need, so having more torque available doesn't fix anything. So that's off-road, and much of the same logic still applies on-road, but there are other unique advantages to an all-wheel drive system like this as well, as it relates to torque vectoring. I'd put torque vectoring into three tiers of effectiveness. First, a braking-based system. Going around a corner, a vehicle can brake the inside rear tire, which enhances the way the vehicle rotates, making it feel more neutral as it will understeer less. But you don't really want to use the brakes to help rotate a vehicle in scenarios where you're accelerating. Maybe it feels better to drive, but you're wasting energy. This leads to tier two, where you actually overdrive the outside tire. Systems like Honda and Acura's Super Handling All-Wheel Drive does this, where it will physically rotate the outside tire faster as it accelerates out of a corner. This really helps the vehicle come alive. It's awesome to drive as it happens very quickly and the vehicle feels really responsive. But there are mechanical limitations to these systems. 
You can't choose any wheel speed, there's a limit. And ultimately all your power comes from one source, the engine, which is strategically divided amongst the wheels as best as possible. Which leads to tier 3, Rivian system. Whether you're accelerating or decelerating, the electric motors can supply torque or slow a wheel with regenerative braking at any amount, at any wheel speed, and any torque split at any time, since each wheel has its own unique torque input. This really transforms the way the Rivian steering feels, making it super responsive by controlling understeer and oversteer gradients of the vehicle. Now, the truck I drove was on all-terrain tires, which gives a mushy steering feel in comparison to all seasons or proper summer tires, but the steering was still quite good all things considered. And just to be clear, torque vectoring does not change how much grip you have. You don't get to corner faster just because you have torque vectoring, but it does change how quickly you reach that lateral grip, as it enhances how the vehicle yaws or rotates. Think about it this way, you turn in with a big heavy vehicle. Eventually the front starts to rotate the vehicle, the body roll comes in, and you reach the limit of grip where the big heavy truck begins to understeer or plow ahead. With a Rivian, which by the way is most definitely a big heavy truck at over 7,000 pounds, when you turn in, things are rather immediate. It won't corner as quickly as a Ferrari, but it will turn in quickly, and that response makes it feel way sportier, which is what drivers like in on-road driving. Now, there's simply too much fascinating information to cover the Rivian R1T in a single video, of which I learned so much about from discussions with Charles Sanderson, the chief engineer of Rivian R1 vehicles. But to briefly cover one additional aspect that greatly impacts off-road driving and goes hand-in-hand -hand with the all-wheel drive system, the suspension is truly innovative. It's an adaptation of what you can find on McLaren sports cars, which don't use traditional sway bars, but hydraulics instead. And off-road, you can essentially disable these hydraulic sway bars, as I'm calling them, which means you have amazing suspension articulation without impacting the other end of the vehicle. So I put the truck in a scenario to demonstrate this. Here you can see the right rear is nearly fully extended, stretching out the suspension so the tire maintains contact with the ground. The front right is heavily compressed, squeezed by the relative elevation rise beneath it. And the opposite side does the opposite. The front left is heavily extended, again stretching the suspension so the tire maintains contact, and the rear left is heavily compressed. The vast majority of vehicles in this scenario would have at least one, if not two wheels up in the air, highly compromising the all-wheel drive system. But the lack of sway bars and long suspension travel allows for contact, meaning the tires get as much grip as possible to put down torque. And on top of this, again, thanks to a lack of sway bars, as well as no solid axles, I've never driven something that so carelessly rode over potholes. It's almost as if they don't exist. The ride quality over potholes in off-road mode is exceptional, without your head being tossed around violently. But then go on-road, and the system enables the cross-connection of the various corners, and you get a really flat, responsive ride. It genuinely transforms the truck for the conditions you drive in. That's pretty cool. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.